Hey, Homeless 101. Here we are again. Anonymous team member A and B here again now trying to start this blog in earnest. So this stuff, staff, staff infection is something that I had to start dealing with um, probably about nine, let me see, when did the staff really start being a problem? 2000, and around this area um, in, in, in Boston and in New Hampshire and Rhode Island, it started being a problem probably about 2012, 11, 12, 13, something like, something like that, yeah. around there. 13. Never was a problem. For some reason, people started to get staph infections, turning into cellulitis, and then um, it just, I think it just got spread all over the area. And so these are things that you can use to prevent staph and to treat staph. Believe it or not, one of the most simple things that you can use that you, to prefer prevention, to clean the staph off of you, is um, the uh, pine oil. Pine oil, you can buy it. I think it's ridiculous and dangerous. Um, but you can then uh, just get some cheap options. This has pine oil in it. Read the back. These little travel bottles you can get in dollar stores. It's really kind of cool if you're traveling or inside at a hoodie for a minute, right? The big bottles are pain in the ass, but it can be fairly cheap. Walmart, etc. Um, the other pine saws, I want to warn you, do not have pine oil in them. It's just some foo-foo, fluffy bullshit. So, pine saw, pine oil, and this stuff is pine tar soap. Though it's expensive, you don't have to use that much or very often, but you do need to use it. Uh, the secret of a traveler is a few items are expensive that you have, and everything else is from a secondhand store or a thrift store or free or whatever. Don't steal. I'm not advocating that. I don't do it, okay? <laughs> You're just going to piss everybody off. That's on you. I just budget really well, I guess. So the deal is, is what you need, you need. If it's got to be quality, it's got to be quality. If you can get it for free, great. If someone can sponsor you and buy it for you, great. If you're panhandling in front of a goddamn store and you know they carry this shit and they're like, is there anything you want in there? Just turn around and tell them you need this and why. Someone will get it for you. Who knows, okay? But it's four bucks a bar, is that right? Yeah, and that's pricey, okay? If you're not gonna put this in your soap dish to carry it with other soap, like I do, in your bag and you're storing it somewhere, store this thing away from everything else and seal it inside one of these and put it in a plastic bag by itself because it will stink up everything else. And it'll it'll make it so it's just not good for other items. It smells good though. It smells good, <laughs> but it doesn't store well for some reason. No. If, if it, we tried to store this once with witch hazel that leaked a little bit out of the bottle in the same big bin, and it just created this disastrous <laughs> smell that was like noxious fumes or something, you know. And it was bad. So just yeah. Um, so you take this sucker here. Uh, you store it by itself if you have a storage space or something, but if you're carrying it, can you get the other soap too? Yeah. If you're carrying it, um, you want to cut it up to make it last. You can carry it like this. Um, personally, I would just take half of it if I was by myself. There's two of us, so I cut it up way smaller, but cut it in half, put that in here with other soap. And then take this sucker and store it in your bag. Because the whole thing, it's too heavy and it's going to fucking go down too quickly and it's expensive. So how you save money is you cut it. This is uh, Dr. Bronner's. And that is what becomes of this little one-third piece of soap. And this is what we carry. Because this stuff, you don't want to just use that. This is a treatment soap. That you can use every day. This... So you want to cut it up? Yeah. Okay. So what you're going to do 
is you're going to cut it in half or in thirds to save money because this way you're just soaping up and you know watering down like a third at a time so how long does this last us when we do this about a month about a month, about a month. He gets a third, I get a third, and then we use the last third until we can buy another one. Okay, and you have to cut soap really carefully. This, this, this is hard, so you have to make lines first. Um, this is like fairly easy, Dr. Bronner's. And I tried liquid soaps for, uh, for cleansing, and it just, they don't last long enough. They just go right down the drain. Um, number B, do his thing with that, so. That's that stuff. Try to get the big one because if you get the big one, you're buying 4.25 ounces for like 4.99. If you get the smaller one, you're paying 4.25 for three ounces. So of course you get more. Okay, and here's the deal: staff that will prevent it. If you anywhere you travel, forget even thinking about it. Just carry the damn soap all the time and use it for prevention. If you wash with it once every other day, even once a week. Um, I would because it washes the staff off and it kills it. It kills a bunch of other stuff too. Look it up on the internet. Pine, pine, pine oil, pine tar soap. This is good for your body and if you have to, I guess it's good for laundry by hand or something. It is going to be used not on your skin. Understand the difference between surfacants surface disinfectants and things that you can use on your skin. Um, for instance, we're going to go over uh, different like wipes and chemicals that you can use for cleaning. A good example of this is like Clorox wipes, which are really good for surfaces. Do not use them on your skin. Um, but the wet ones, or the generic, which are cheaper, the red, sometimes they come in yellow, um, when they're lemon scented, that's okay for your skin, your bottom, cuts, wounds, and surfaces. It's just the chemicals in this stuff is not meant for skin. It'll hurt you, and it might make a cut or a wound worse. Oh yeah. Um, it's meant for surfaces. However, the odd exception is that this is actually listed for laundry, not your skin, but for laundry. That's the limitation of it. And when we're talking about laundry, we're talking about, can you pour me a capful and I'll show them what we use for laundry no. to prevent staff? Just the smallest amount. Okay. Minus the bubbles. Yeah. That's it, okay? And we're talking about bleach. I would use this for stuff. I was going to show you later. Can I have some kind of cup or something? Yeah. Oh, I can just put it back in here. Yeah. But this is what you would use for your laundry, right? That's it. I mean, did you see that? Like, how much that was? That's it. Because it stinks. We do small amounts of laundry. If you're doing a big laundry, that's probably even just enough. That may be too, that's too much for a small load. Too much. It's very strong, just because remember, you're supposed to take this and dilute it with water when you clean. You're not supposed to use this straight. So just a few drops, just enough, even drops, just enough to get rid of the staph and other germs. And I would only use it when I thought there was a problem or when something was dirty and disgusting and had something that needed to be cleaned. I wouldn't use it all the time. So that's the deal with that. Um, this is for skin for prevention or treatment after a staph infection when you're taking the antibiotics. If unfortunately you, it turns to cellulitis and gets that far. And the other thing would be this for a very tiny, minute amount with, um, clothing. And then this is good for surfaces. Um, we have taken spray bottles with water and actually sprayed down sleep spots and <laughs> washed and, and like come up and put water on them. Um, you have to kind of do that diplomatically. I guess I'll explain it at some point with sleep spots. But the other thing would be um, 
if you want to spray the back of your tarp with that, but then you'd have to carry around a spray bottle. This really only works when you have storage at this point. You can carry them on a mini spray bottle, can't you? Yeah. Like we do with the Purell, which I'll go over later. Yes. This is something I found that I really wish I had before, because I'll tell you, when I was in Texas and down south, not only did I have staph before that, because it came to this area, and I got cellulitis that ate up my skin. I was thinking, what's this gooey yellow stuff? Can I pull it out? Tried to pull it out, and it's part of your skin. And you'll know when you have a staph infection. Um, you'll become very tired at, towards the end when your skin is rotting. It'll be very hard to breathe. You'll notice you're short of breath and you're extremely dizzy. Get to a hospital. They'll give you antibiotics. I can only take one antibiotics because I have allergic reactions to stuff. They'll find out which one is the broad spectrum that covers it. After that, you're going to have to do prevention because you can't keep taking antibiotics. And I've seen some whoppers, okay, young kids and stuff that don't know any better down in Austin and stuff, down in Texas where this is really bad, this problem with staph. Their entire arm just eaten up and they're on antibiotics. How many times are you going to be able to do that? And if you're getting older, so look, just try this. It works. If you're in a communal setting, take a piece of it, cut it in threes, just even cut it in blocks. Use it once a week. Use it twice a week, sparingly. It, it's worth it because it'll probably save your life. And this stuff is good for surfaces and it's good for definitely for toilets. That's where you're going to catch a staph infection. Can I have my bibs and show them? When I was down in Texas and down south, traveling through. This is really bad down there, okay? Uh, I'm a New Englander. We love Lysol because the nuns used to use it because of the flu epidemic up here in the 20s killed everybody. So people are very Lysol aware. I don't think they even know what it is down there, which was very frustrating. I now carry my own small bottle. I don't give a shit. Um, when I was traveling, we all know what these are, the bibs, right? I didn't realize I was in the habit of, because I'm a girl, I have to always drop these, right, off of me, take them down, pull the pants down to go to the bathroom. What was happening is I was letting these hang down on the floor when I was sitting on the toilet. And then I would take them and put them on in the hot weather. And where do these go? They go right over your t-shirt or cami or bra or whatever, right onto that area of your skin. And that's the same place where your backpack straps go. And I was carrying staff that way. And I went to the doctor and he said, look, it's a hygiene issue. You're, you're somehow getting it onto your backpack and it's reinfecting you and your backpack's right against your skin. And it's because of these that I finally, it, can't, it finally figured it out. <laughs> you can't let these drop in the toilets. You have to, when you drop them, if you're a girl or a boy that has to pull them down, you got to drop them and grab them immediately. And your butt flap, if you have one on there. Grab it and stick it inside the leg or one of the pockets. Make sure it does not touch the ground and you will prevent staph. Or if you think that you have done that, um, I'll show this to you later, wipes, wet ones. Disinfectant wipes, not the Clorox, but the other ones you can use on skin. Yeah, you can yeah, use, yeah. It, Purell doesn't work. Purell does not kill staph for some reason, but the wet ones does. If you wanna wipe down these things, wipe down your, uh, straps to your backpack and wipe down the area. And along with this, you'll probably do pretty well preventing staff. Um, there's some other stuff I'm gonna show you um, about a staph infection for, with, with treatment. Maybe I should show now. I, it's, it's very iffy and I actually wanna see what the legal ramifications are. I'm not a doctor, okay? <laughs> I am not a doctor and this, can I have my bite kit so that's what I did when I got a bad staph infection. They kept coming back down there because it's so bad down there. Um, something else on staph. I would get poison ivy or I would get a, a lot of bug bites down there. I don't know what this is, right? I am not advising you to do this for legal reasons. I am not a doctor, but this is what worked for me. This is just telling you what I did, okay? I wouldn't do this if you don't know what you're doing. In the past, I have gotten poison ivy. In the past, I have gotten a lot of bites from spiders down in, in Texas outside of big cities. And 
because of my allergic reactions, I can't have the venom at all, or even from a bee sting. And the bees are more aggressive down there, I notice, and they will sting you if you get near a bush. I have to use this all the time when I'm down there nowadays. However, the other use for this is, can you open that? If you have st open wounds and there's staff everywhere, and this is before I got the soap. This is why the soap works, because the soap will clean the open wounds and you won't have to do this. This is cure. I mean, this is prevention and this is a cure. This is prevention and this is a cure, right? That's the difference. You want prevention. If I had known about this stuff, that's why I'm so adamant about it, because I'm pissed. Like, if I had known simple pine oil would prevent me this nightmare, I have scars on my skin and everything, I wouldn't have had this problem. That's why I'm pushing it so hard, right? I wish somebody told me. <laughs> um, this is what I had to use to prevent staff fr from getting into the open wounds that were the poison ivy scratches or the bug bites. Because they were, every time I got a bug bite, whether I had to suck venom out of it or not, the staff would get into it and I would start to have the staff get into the bites. It just wouldn't stop. So what I did is, like I said, this is just my experience. Take this thing, if you know how to use it, right? Um, I was using it to suck the staff out of the wounds to prevent it. If you use this soap, you should not have to do that. If you are in a situation where you know that it's happening and you know what the staff feels like and you know what it looks like, only if you know what you're doing would I suggest this at all. You can use this to get the staff out of the bites and the wounds before it turns into cellulitis. Because when it does, you have to take the antibiotics again. If you use this, it should prevent it. Anything that you use this for to suck out venom or whatever it is, clean it really well with this stuff. This, or if you don't have that, of course, I didn't know about it at the time, right? Right. Antibacterial soap and then alcohol wipes. You know, get the, st the staff and the germs and the venom out of it. But keep it clean or buy a new one. It's 15 bucks. Camping store, Walmart, whatever. Try to keep the pieces, don't lose them. This is for removal of venom. You see the little snake thing here? Looks like a snake. <laughs> fits a, it fits a, a two little that size, this size, right? Um, and the thing with staff I noticed is that when you suck it out, it's, it's a clear liquid. Have you ever done this? Have you watched me do this? No, but... Okay, I, well, yeah, I mean, there was a whole phase I went through where I had poison ivy and I had to keep doing this. I have milk staff. Yeah, and I mean, you, you have to take the... It comes out as blood, but it's like a clear liquid too, also. And then you have a biohazard issue. So you have to be understand how to be really clean. The last thing I want is to hear about a bunch of fucking band-aids and blood and and uh, alcohol wipes being left in places. Please don't do that. If you have to carry a damn plastic bag for your trash and then throw it away somewhere, do it. Number one rule, clean up your mess. Clean up after yourself. I don't care what condition you're in. It's going to make everything easier for all of us in the long term. Seriously. You can use plastic bags from supermarkets, from everything from emergency bathroom to your garbage, to protecting this stuff in your bag, to food, to just make sure the bags are clean. Garb garbage bags don't really work. They stink. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so if you, I'm, I'm not even going to go showing that. I have videos of it. Maybe I'll go over it at some point. But it's like if you don't know what you're doing, it's going to be a mess, and I don't want to have anyone hurt themselves. But staff is so nasty when you get down there. And this is way more desirable than that or antibiotics and because they suck. And it's a pain in the ass, and you have to remember to take them. You can't lose them. And sometimes they make you pass out and sleep, and sometimes it's good, bad to be out in the sun, right? 
That's it. Prevention. Because this sucks having to clean up that mess, and so does the antibiotics. My advice, just use the damn soap. And I'm really sick of seeing people that are either using drugs and out there or not clean and stuff, you know, getting staph infections. Not only does it spread it to the spaces that you sleep because you think people come out and clean the sleep spots. Hell no. Hell people no. don't care. <laughs> as well as like... It goes and spreads to other people that you sleep near or whatever. We don't need it. None of us need it. Why let the system win by making yourself sick? Prevention. You deserve to be healthy.